All right, so um, this meeting will now commence at 6.04 p.m. The first order of business is roll call. May we please commence roll call? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Awesome. So to begin, student trustee Bravo. Bravo absent, President Kumar. Here. Kumar present, Vice President Ahmed. Here. Ahmed present, Treasurer Nia Manuri. Here. Nia Manuri present, Chief of Staff Almendras. Here. Almendras present, Chairwoman Hamad. Present. Hamad present, Chairwoman El Adawi. Present. El Adawi present, Chairwoman Nadala. Present. Nadala present, Chairwoman Obide. Present. Obide present, Chairwoman Show. Here. Show present, Speaker of the House Stancheva. Present. Stancheva present, Representative Petineo. Here. Petineo present, Representative Nehi. Representative Jada Nehi. Nehi absent. Representative Jocelyn Aranda Ortiz has excused absence. Representative Taylor. Present. Taylor present. Representative Abdel Salam. Present. Abdel Salam present. Representative Selvaraj. Present. Selvaraj present. Representative B. Here. B present. Representative Fernandez. Pre present. Fernandez present. Representative Villa Gomez. Present. Villa Gomez present. Representative Hack. Present. Hack present. Representative Nguyen. Present. Nguyen present. Representative Bilba Sigamani. Present. Bilba Sigamani present. Representative Can. Present. Can present. Representative Malik. Representative Sarah Malik. Malik absent. Representative Henry. Present. Henry present. Representative Chris Mann. Present. Chris Mann present. And that concludes roll call. All right, thank you. Okay, so the next order of business will be reading and approval of the minutes. So please take this time to read over the minutes. Okay, are there any corrections to the minutes? If not, the minutes will stand as approved. The next order of business is reading and approval of the agenda. Please take this time to read over the agenda. Are there any corrections to the agenda? If not, then the agenda will stand as approved. The next order of business is public comment. Uh, is there any public comments tonight? Okay, uh, if there is no public comment, we can move on to the next order of business, which is guest speakers. Um, we do not have any guest speakers scheduled for tonight. 
Uh, so we can move on to the next order of business, which is election of new representatives. So um, the way the process is going to work is um, similar to last time. Applicants will go to a breakout room with Matthew, um, and then we can pull them out one by one. Tonight, we only have two. Um, and you guys, if you are here, we will ask you to come out of the breakout room, give you two minute speech, and then we will ask you questions. Um, after that, you guys will be asked to go back into the breakout room. We will be having discussion. Um, and then all the voting members will be put into their separate breakout room with Wasan, and they will vote for all of the applications, all six of them. And yeah, are there any questions on how the process is going to work? Okay, in that case, let me make out the, break, uh, the breakout rooms. And to the first one, I will be adding everybody who presented last week and the two members who are presenting this week, um, because this conversation is for USG members only. So unfortunately, you guys cannot be present for that. Mm. Okay. All right, I'm gonna open the first one. It looks like there are only four representatives, or I'm sorry, four applicants. Um, I don't know if there's, if I'm missing the other two, but if you guys are here and if you do not get invited for or to a breakout room, um, please let me know. I'm gonna open the rooms now. And for the rest of you here, can you please check the participants and let me know if there's anybody who is not a member? No, I think you're good. Yeah, okay, awesome. All right, so uh, let's see, let me just open the application, they come back. All right, welcome back y'all. Um, so everybody uh, has just voted and all of the results are in. So Wasan, you're welcome to announce the results. Yeah, um, thank you so much. Uh, and thanks to everyone for participating in this process. Um, so with uh, 15 voting representatives today, we have voted in, we voted in four new members um, and those People are sorry. I'm not trying to make this more anticipated. I'm just trying to find the right words. Um, so we have voted in um, Zaid Bora, uh, Arthur Kazowski, uh, Nora Alsadi, and Danya Zaibat. So congratulations to you all. And again, huge thanks to everyone for um, for even being a part of all of this. Congratulations. Um, so you will now be voted in as representatives. Um, as to those of you who did not get voted in. Um, you guys are welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting. Uh, and if you are still interested in the fall, we'll be taking applications during that time as well. Um, thank you so much for, you know, applying to be in USG and um, good job for getting this far. Um, yeah. All right. So the members who got voted in, please turn on your cameras and Turn off your mics and, or, sorry, turn on your mics and then repeat after me. I do solemnly swear. 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 All of you at the same time would be great. Um, that I will support and defend. That I will support, that I will support and defend. The students of the University of Illinois at Chicago. The students, the students at the University of Illinois at Chicago. Illinois at Chicago. <laughs> that I will serve students. That I will, I will, that I will serve, serve students. students. Faithfully and truthfully. Faithfully, faithfully, and, faithfully and, truthfully. and truthfully. And that I will uphold, protect, and preserve. 
I will uphold, protect, protect and, and preserve. preserve. The Constitution and standing rules. The Constitution, Constitution and standing rules. The undergraduate student government. And the graduate, the graduate, and the graduate student, student government. government. Congratulations, you're officially representatives. Good job. We're really excited to have you here and you guys are gonna do great. All right, so as you have been already voted in, we can move on to the next order of business, which is ex officio reports. May we please have the report of the advisor? Yes, good evening. I hope everyone had a great weekend and it's staying warm. I know it's very cold out there, so please stay indoors as much as you can and warm. Um, it has been brought to our attention that some students have had issues with their academic eligibility form for EPC. So if you are a student who falls in that category of having an issue with your academic eligibility form, meaning that EPC stated that they did not receive it, feel free to send me an email at drepark1 at uic.edu and let me know. Um, myself and Keith, we work, we don't technically work with the EPC, so, but we do work with them if we need to follow up on some issues in relations to your candidacy for a position with USG. So if you follow that category of, of having an issue with your academic eligibility form stating that they did not receive it, please let myself or Keith know, send me an email at drepark1 at uic.edu, and then I'll follow up. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? I have a question. For the EPC, since on the timeline it says that campaigning can start starting from this week, do we just submit materials to the EPC and that's it? Sorry, I believe so. Um, that'd be more a question for them. So if you want to just follow up with them at their email address, I don't have it handy right now, but I can definitely put it in the chat and then they can touch base with you. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Can I also just add that there's a like EPC handbook that talks about um, campaigning and the whole process. I'm going to link it in the chat right now. I think it's helpful. And they also recently updated their uh, social media um, section that talks about campaigning. So make sure to read that before you like start campaigning. All right, are there any other questions? Okay, if not, then we can move on to the next order of business, which is officer reports. May we please have the report of the president? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Daisy. Um, and thank you, everyone uh, who is participating in student elections. Like, big shout out to you for putting in the work. Um, and also, just again, thanks to, to Dre and Keith. Um, we've got a couple of things, and I guess this goes on for, for a bit long, so I'll try to, try to speak quickly. Um, but uh, I got a chance to review the GPA recalculation letter that uh, Chairwoman O'Grier prepared. So a huge shout out to her for this. Um, looking forward to kind of like seeing what kind of response we get. But it looked like uh, at the very least, like this was something of interest, um, both like to administrators, but also mainly, of course, to students. Um, they are reviewing the ethnic studies proposal in the academic senate. And so I got a chance to speak to a couple of the faculty senators. Um, and I kind of like worked on uh, this like document to help sort of like ease the process along uh, with Representative Taylor uh, on creating sorts of like supplemental materials and sort of further lobbying for this. Uh, last week we had our mental health task force uh, meeting with Indiana and I'm sure others on this uh, call will also speak about that. Um, and then it, just again, a shout out to the folks who are on the mental health coalition um, who have been doing some really great work. Uh, very recently, like I noticed uh, they have like the Instagram page up um, and there's a ton of updates and stuff that we learned in this previous mental health uh, task force meeting last week that are definitely helpful to students um, all across the campus. So 
um, please do check that out and um, share it with your networks if you can. Um, we're submitting a formal list of recommendations this Wednesday. Um, then we're still looking at that town hall for student issues with the Student Survey Coalition, uh, looking to be March 4th, which is in two weeks from now. Um, and we're looking to have all of the student survey data from the 1500 or so respondents um, by the end of this week. So like by February 18th. Um, we also got a chance to meet with the Campus Advocacy Network um, and like representatives from Diversity Inclusion Committee to talk about some of our major goals, um, three of which we're looking at are uh, implementing this like higher level of community standards, um, pushing for sort of uh, Title IX deputy chairs uh, to shorten the period uh, of trials, and then also uh, sort of continuing to advocate for this idea of a transformative justice coordinator, someone to kind of hold that position. Um, and then we got a chance to have our meeting with the chancellor and the student councils, and we talked about a lot of different topic areas. Um, for example, uh, like one thing that we talked about was specifically like their, uh, you know, moves towards advancing racial equity. Um, and some of the things that we had noticed, especially from um, more like student side and student activist side, uh, was that they had sort of missed some of the demands that had been made this summer. Um, and so we sort of brought that up uh, and they kind of referred us to like the equity dashboard. And so we're going to continue to review the two um, and kind of compare and see what's going on. Um, they're currently doing vaccinations at Credit Union Arena uh, and they have 40 new stations open um, as well as like athletics like still kind of ongoing there. Um, we got a chance to ask specifically about like student employees getting vaccinated under uh, 1C, which is not something that is like uh, commonplace in um, in all higher ed places, especially for student employees. And so the chancellor said that that they're going to definitely try to be as inclusive as possible in the vaccination rollout. Um, so he was leaning towards yes. Um, he said that essentially everybody else is going to be looking at vaccines sometime in uh, in May. Uh, and then we talked about student housing specifically around uh, the work that we wanted to do about uh, emergency housing. Um, and so he uh, and so like Vice Chancellor Tolliver said that they're still like planning to offer housing for students during finals week for thirty five dollars. Um, and they currently have the existing programs to offer temporary housing through the Dean of Students Office and campus housing for students in emergency situations. Um, but they're sort of struggling to maintain this demand just because of a reduction in the housing capacity due to COVID. Um, and so one thing that he said that we could con consider is how we might be able to use excess available housing on the East Campus um, and take undergraduate students who are living on West Campus and move them to East where it might be more convenient for them to go to classes and then give away some of those spots on West Campus uh, for students who might need them. Um, and they're looking to pr provide some additional housing assistance as well from the CARES Act funding, um, something along the lines of an extra $2 million to housing assistance for students which is up from the previous amount, which is 1 million, um, which is obviously way more than USG has uh, to be able to fund. Um, so we're hoping to help bolster that in any way. And I'm looking to meet with Vice Chancellor Tolliver sometime next week. Um, they're looking to also ex um, increase the amount for stipends from two to $5,000 um, and work with the Chicago Housing Authority on um, further housing units in the city of Chicago itself. Um, but we're looking forward to meeting with uh, Rex next week. And if anybody would like to join, like these meetings are always open um, and hopefully be able to see how we might be able to help with like USG funds or some of the ideas that we had had um, earlier on in the, the uh, semester. Um, in terms of like mental health, like they mentioned that they're also looking to hire new mental health counselors as well as uh, embedding more social service workers. Um, one of the things that we had talked about like in January with the provost was this idea of dedicated mental health days before finals, something along the lines of like a reading week of anywhere from three to five days where you would have no classes. Uh, you wouldn't extend the academic calendar either. It would just literally be three to five days off. Um, he said that faculty on his committee were very much in favor of something like this. The chancellor was very much in favor of something like this. So a lot of um, the administrators um, sort of like uh, throughout UIC seem to like this idea. And so we're hoping to get more updates or see like where they're kind of sitting with this, um, see if we might need to like write something more formally uh, to see if they might actually be in favor of pursuing uh, an option such as this. Um, and similar ideas of like, you know, like having like no homework assignments or something like that, like around that in school. I thought was kind of neat. Um, and then we talked about like financial aid and like how like students were having some issues with accessing financial aid. And he said they would like look into that. They again, like uh, we like last semester, like they committed to increasing the wage of student workers by a dollar every year until they hit 15. Um, they're trying to like centralize student hiring to like get more latitude in student wages. Um, and then last piece, like we had uh, asked about like some of the student affairs questions, like um, specifically uh, any safety changes, especially last year after uh, the death of Tushar Patel, one of our uh, fellow students. 
Um, and so they mentioned that they're going to work with like local aldermen uh, and include this in like the list of their priorities uh, for the coming semester to really kind of look to build more safety resources, especially like to kind of prevent traffic incidents. Um, and also looking to like resuscitate the ACCC program for uh, for drop in repairs, where if you kind of showed up with like a damaged piece of equipment, you could get that repaired by ACCC itself. Um, and they've hired a new CIO to sort of take on that project, among others. So that is pretty much everything. Uh, thank you all so much. Uh, I now yield the rest of my time for questions. I have a question. Yeah. Sorry, I still struggle with the feature. Um, do you mind scrolling up to the first page again? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to remember what my question was. Um, okay, to be honest, I lost it, but I have a second question. Um, yeah. So, for the um okay so this is kind of like a tangent but basically i had an unfortunate experience where my car ran out of gas and even though i was a uic student and um like i was on campus i was literally at the same intersection of taylor and um morgan the uic parking was not able to help me um <laughs> I don't know if that's something that we would want to kind of bucket under safety, but I definitely like, basically they weren't able to help me because I was not paying for UIC parking because I park at my apartment. Um, but logically to me, it seems as though at least if I'm a student and I'm like in a position of not safe um, for myself or for other people, considering my car was literally like in the middle of the road. I feel like that should be something that they were able to help with. Um, because eventually how that situation played out was basically um, UIC police had to come help me and they didn't come because I called, but rather someone thought I was stealing a car. Um, and so just that entire situation of events was very like oh there are <laughs> a lot of gaps here but i wonder if maybe that's something that we can address at one of those like safety um like in one of those conversations about campus safety is kind of what role uic parking is able to pay um play um yeah, yeah definitely um because they have like uh like vehicles and other sorts of uh fleet cars that might be able to help out in a situation like that. So I'll definitely ask next time. Oh, I also have a question. Yeah. So you mentioned for the housing, mm -hmm. uh, $35. Can you elaborate more on that? Yes. So that's their current program. That's one of their programs um, where for $35, a student can stay in campus housing for the extent of finals. Um, that's one part of, of some of the existing sort of housing remedies that they're looking at, right? Like one big thing, of course, is that uh, they've gotten a lot of CARES Act funding, and so they're dedicating about an extra million dollars uh, towards housing assistance for students. Um, they're continuing to um, do what we wanted to do, right, which was provide housing units directly for a student in need. Um, and they're also looking to kind of expand some of this work with the Chicago Housing Authority, and Rex was like, I'm going to open this up now that you mentioned this. Um, and so that's pretty exciting for me. Um, but essentially working with the Chicago Housing Authority to get some CHA rates um, on local housing units. Okay, so you said $35 for a duration of the week, not just not just per night? Um, that's a good question, actually. I don't know. I will check back on that and get back to you. Thank you. And uh, what are the, like, I guess, requirements to uh, be eligible, or, or is there none? From what I understand, the final housing is just first come, first serve. It's, uh, if there's a space for you, like they'll take you. Okay, <laughs> I think I'm gonna sign up for that. I do remember my other question now. Um, it was about the, um, like overseeing the hiring of the new mental health counselors. Can <laughs> you also just kind of talk a little bit more about that? Because I know this is something that came up when we were talking um, 
like just in our coalition meeting about how there is grad student representation on that task force, but there is not, to my understanding, any undergraduate representation um, on like that hiring committee. Um, so that was something that we were going to add to like a list of recommendations is that there should be representation for both graduate and undergraduate programs. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you asked me if I could speak more on this. This is um, more or less the extent of what I know. Um, you just mentioned that they were uh, working on this and they were um, putting out um, ads and uh, job okay. listings. Sorry. Yeah, I just job listings. clarify that you meant like it was like they were doing that, not necessarily that like we had any involvement in it. No, but we can yeah. always definitely reach out to like Rex and ask if um, we might be able to, you know, kind of revisit the inclusion of like undergraduate representatives on this committee. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's something that I do think might take a little bit of discussion is kind of um, as like a student or a governing body, if we want to kind of pull together our forces and kind of say that, okay, like pause in terms of hiring, like don't hire all just like PhD counselors, but let's also consider crisis counselors. And to me, that seems like it's something that is um, time sensitive because they have a certain amount of funding and there are plans for that funding. Yeah. And unfortunately, I think if they kind of use up all that funding and we aren't able to like vocalize exactly what we want, then mm -hmm. we have like a missed opportunity. Um, but that's right. something that definitely warrants further discussion. Yeah, I mean, let me know what you want to do and I'm like happy to sign on or, or email or. Uh... Yeah, I think, yeah, I'll, I'll talk more about it in my report, but we can, yeah. Are there any other questions? I did want to say something, um, and just for us to keep it in mind, all the funding that comes from the CARES Act funding, uh, it's not eligible, it's not directed also towards um, international students, this is only for US citizens, um, because of course the federal government is giving this money. So all, whenever we're thinking about like using this money for housing programs, then let's also think about how we can help and to make this programs more inclusive, specifically for international students who literally, when the whole pandemic came, they're just, some of them just didn't have where to stay. Um, so yeah, definitely let's try to think of ways that we can include all international students in this program too. Absolutely, thank you so much for bringing that up. Other questions? All right, if there are no questions, then the president's report will be filed. Next, we have the vice president's report. Okay, cool. Good evening, everyone. Um, hope everyone week six is going okay, I think. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, okay, so in terms of mental health stuff, we are at about 480 responses, which is great, because um, our original goal was 500. But I think I might have mentioned this last week, but when we were speaking, Dahlia suggested that we kind of start compiling the data once we hit 500, but continue to leave it open um, so that students can continue responding to that and we can kind of like build up that data set. Um, but we can kind of start making use of the data at 500 because likely, um, it is representative enough, but it could definitely be more representative. And then kind of as new data comes in, if there are big changes that we need to make, we can always make those before we continue sharing that. Um, and so next week, I do want to kind of share with you all some of the key pieces of information that came from that survey. Um, so we'll definitely like coalition wise, we'll aim to kind of have some of that data cleaned up and put together in a way that we can concisely share it with you all. Um, and then as Wasson mentioned, um, we did start an Instagram account. And so two of the biggest things that we realized that does exist that most students don't know about um, 
are the fact that Campus Care covers telemental health, telehealth, mental health services right now without copay because of COVID. Um, and even in me just kind of like going to their website and looking, it took me a while to figure out what that meant and kind of how to make sure of it. Um, but yeah, so that is cool and exciting. Um, and I definitely hope just kind of spreading the word will help whoever might make use of those resources. Um, and then the second thing that I think is common for us to know, but I don't think is very common for most of the student body to know otherwise, is that the DRC does do accommodations for mental health related diagnoses as well. So whether that is like depression and anxiety, but of course you have to have like a, an actual like licensed diagnosis for it, but even just reaching out to them and kind of starting that process is an available option. Um, I think kind of from that point, jumping on like further, I think one of the things that the coalition might look into is kind of what those accommodations look like um, in terms of, sorry. Um, I think what those, something that the coalition can kind of move further on is looking at what those accommodations look like. Um, because I know in the survey when I was looking at some of the responses, I think one of the responses was kind of like accommodations for mental health are longer test taking times, but that's not necessarily what I need. What I need is for professors to kind of be okay if I say that I'm not able to complete an assignment on a certain day or something like that. Um, so definitely looking into what those accommodations are and seeing if we can vouch for better ones. Um, and then on that note, also just kind of making sure that all the work that we've done over the last year with the coalition is documented in this um, list of recommendations, because there's definitely way more that we've kind of opened the can of worms for than we're able to implement this year. Um, but happily and like fortunately, it is an effort that is going to continue beyond this administration and beyond like my graduation. Um, and so having that list of efforts and initiatives that we want to continue working for in years after. Um, and then also like the reading week proposal, seeing if we need to kind of move further on that or if we need to formalize it. Um, and then, like I said, just kind of looking at the future of the Mental Health Coalition, deciding whether that needs to be an organization also separate of USG or whether it continues to be like an independent, just student-led effort. Um, and then I was also able to look at some of the data from the burnout survey group, um, the parts that were specific to mental health. Um, and if that interests you all, I can definitely share some of that with you. Um, they kind of gave me permission to use that to kind of push some of the initiatives that we've been wanting to. Um, and yeah, the point that I was talking about earlier with Lawson, I definitely like when we have time for questions, um, do want to hear like the general group's input in terms of whether we think crisis counseling is something that we should be pushing for and how we think we should go about kind of asking for that, whether it's a resolution from us that's then followed by conversations with different administration or what that looks like. Um, and then so some things that are upcoming this week are meeting with the DRC to talk about the relationship that they have with the Counseling Center because they're obviously another resource on campus that has a very tangible um, relationship to students' mental health. Um, and so making sure that the Counseling Center and the DRC have like a relationship that is conducive to um, being able to have students kind of, if their needs aren't met at the Counseling Center, if they can be also, if any way they can be kind of represented by the DRC. Um, and then also bringing up the idea of having a mental health event or panel with the relevant administration. This one is a little bit of a holdup because just based off of how our meetings are going with the mental health task force with Dean Dean and others, it kind of feels like it is a little redundant. And unless that event is really specific and we have a very good idea of like what we need to ask and what we want to get out of it, I don't really want to use everyone's time to do that. Um, but so that's still a work in progress. 
Um, and then the last piece for me is that I had a meeting today along with Daniela about um, the, about um, our work with like menstrual hygiene products and dispensers. And so it is like good news because um, I think there were some people that had met with this organization called Aunt Flo in years prior. Um, but it never got carried out. So she was really familiar with kind of what we were trying to do. And basically they have designed their own products to be like biodegradable, like environmentally friendly, um, healthy in terms of like 100% cotton products. Um, and also they've designed their dispensers to carry a lot more products than the typical dispensers that are on market. And it does seem like buying products from them would be, more feasible and more affordable than buying like a dispenser and then products separately. Um, and so we just had that meeting today. So Danielle and I will probably put together like a proposal and um, yeah, a proposal of what exactly that looks like and how many we might be able to afford. And then hopefully we can run that um, through USG and kind of get the budget for that. And then looking at having that implemented by April, early May at the latest in terms of like having the actual shipments arrive and having them installed. Um, so right now it's purely just a matter of us getting that budget approved, paying for it and getting them shipped. Um, and then also this is for like our USG advisors, but when we spoke with um, the representative at Aunt Flo, basically, the dispensers come with like a lifetime warranty and so they just want to make sure that there is like a point person that they can contact like five six years down the line if something goes wrong like you would be able to get it fixed so we wouldn't have to like spend that money all over again um so i just kind of want to make sure that we plan for that as well um and so later on like when we are able to pass that budget and get them approved in terms of buying them then we'll likely have um, kind of a campaign of different student orgs that have all been working towards having free menstrual products on campus. Um, again, so that students are aware of it and know that that is something available for their disposal. And that is it from me. Any questions? Are there Just any a, questions? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, just a really quick question. Um, do we need to like talk to someone like now regarding like approval in like a building space? Um, or do we still have like some time for that? Um, sorry, I was just reading um, the message in the chat, but that's a good question. I did not think of that. I just kind of thought of like the money aspect of it, but um, oh, okay, so that's the other thing is like the installment, they don't do the installing, we would have to have someone from facilities be able but they said it was really easy, like hanging up a picture frame, like should not take more than 10 minutes per bathroom. Um, but I do, I would imagine that we need approval of some sort, right? So uh, do you know who yes. to reach out to? Yeah, so that'll be a conversation that we can have with the facilities department to discuss what that process is going to look like. Mm -hmm. So we have the initiative, but then we need to touch base with our facilities team so that they are on board and understand exactly what that process looks like and the replenishing of that product within that, that space. So we can touch base on that offline and yeah. talk through that. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, if no questions, then the report of the vice president will be filed. Next, we have uh, the report of the treasurer. Hey everyone, hope you guys are doing good. Um, so today the resolution for the UIC library collaboration will be proposed. Like I said last week, um, that's regarding the charging locker and 
if anyone has any ideas on how we can um, brand the charging locker to benefit UC's presence on campus, please let me know. Uh, the YDSA payment has been processed and the members have been notified. They've received all of their um, um, confirmation emails for to get into the conference. Um, I also met with Michelle from Campus Life to discuss some funding for some care packages that she's planning. And I will be meeting with the UIC Chess Club sometime this week regarding uh, merchandise collaboration. Um, I'll be sure to include that USG be, um, the USG logo be on the merchandise as well so that the USG is um, credited for the work that they're doing with this collaboration. And then the Treasury Committee will be meeting with the Sustainability Department on February 26th to see how USG can contribute to their cause. So if anyone wants to be invited to this meeting, don't hesitate to reach out. I met with the new Chief of Staff earlier today. We talked about the Treasury Committee and how things are going. And the Treasury Committee will continue to reach out to organizations on campus to support the student body. I yield the rest of my time for questions. Uh, it's not a question, but more like a statement. I'm going to let you know that for the item cloud, I'm going to send you a lot of art that USG has so that you can pick um, what kind of logos you need. Thank you, Aitana. Any other questions or comments? All right, if there are no questions or comments, the report of the treasurer will be filed. Next, we have my report. So uh, a few things going on um, in my report. So first, we had a meeting with uh, Wasan, Dahlia, and Matthew on Friday to talk about the strike policy. Um, this is still you know, a work in process. It might take a little longer because we are trying to factor in the feedback we are getting. Um, I'll be working with Matthew and the rest of the e-board to create handbooks, which was a great idea by Dahlia um, to basically have the handbooks instead of putting everything in the bylaws. Um, we, will, uh, we will keep having meetings um, probably once or twice a week up until we are ready to present it. And uh, the project might take a little bit longer because we are trying to take care of the finer details but uh, you know, we already have a good chunk of it done. And even if it's not what we expected, it will be done by the end of the semester. We'll, we'll present it by then for sure. Um, Bayan, Anshu, and I are meeting on Wednesday to talk about potentially adding bidets to UIC bathrooms in order to be more inclusive to Muslim students. Um, and that is something that I can report back um, during the next meeting. Additionally, I received a request by a committee member to start uploading all the agendas to box um, instead of just the uh, packets. So I will be doing that. I need to do some work on box, but I'll be getting that started this week. Um, Danny and I, are working to make sure that the meeting minutes are finished and sent out on time. Um, and Danny and Matthew agreed on a deadline on Wednesday at 6 p.m. is what Danny's telling me instead of midnight, like it says in the minutes or sorry, in my report. So it's going to be Wednesday at 6 p.m. unless there is some other feedback that we receive from you guys. Um, all right, we also received a concern from a chairperson about committee member attendance, and we will be working on a solution to ensure that members attend their scheduled committee meetings. Um, just a reminder to all of the committee members that absences from committee meetings also count towards the total amount of absences that you are allowed per semester. And if you exceed that number, you will be removed. So make sure that you attend all of your committee meetings. Um, or if you don't, make sure you have a valid excuse for it that the chairperson needs to approve based on the bylaws. Uh, and lastly, we'll be asking the chairpersons to start inputting this information so that we can make sure you are regularly attending. So that will probably happen this week or next week. All right. Additionally, 
Today, I'll be presenting a resolution of support for Ivor Chen, who was wrongfully dismissed from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. More information to be presented during the resolution portion of it. Um, I said good luck to all the candidates who will present today, but they already presented, so. Um, and then lastly, I have appointed a new interim speaker, um, and that is Kayla. So congratulations to Kayla. I'm really excited to be working with you to have you as my interim speaker. And I would like to yield the rest of my time for you to present your short speech. Um, hi, everybody. Um, thank you. And thank you, Daisy, for appointing me to this position. Um, as interim speaker of the House, I have no doubt that my dedication that has been reflected in my involvement of student government and of the UIC student body in general will transfer into my role. I am confident my organizational skills will exceed what is necessary to help our speaker with everything she needs for our meetings and activities to run smoothly. I'm excited to help serve student government and UIC student body in this way, and I look forward to what the future of our governing, governing body brings. And I'm honored to have been chosen for this position. Thank you, Daisy, and thank you all. Yeah, thank you. I'm really, really excited for this. Um, and yeah, I guess that concludes my report. But does anybody have any questions? Will the handbooks be similar yeah, to? Um, sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Will the handbooks be similar to the Passover documents from last year? Uh, the transition documents. So I'm not exactly 100% certain how they will work because that was something that Dahlia suggested. Um, but their basically their purpose is to be kind of like the transition document. Uh, but okay, yeah, Dahlia, go ahead. <laughs> Awesome. Okay. Uh, so the transition documents are different because they are based upon something that you have decided that your role is important in kind of keeping and transitioning over to your next immediate person. The um, handout or the like handbook would be essentially it would be more so let's say in the bylaws, it says this and in the handbook it's elaborated so like it's kind of like a plan of action and then so your transition is more so like a this is how that plan of action worked for me um these are the tidbits that i would add to make things go a little bit smoother stuff like that does that make a little bit more sense so like the handbook is supposed to be a little bit more general and then the there's more of a like personal touch within the transition documents okay thank you so dahlia just to clarify um, so would that be kind of like, okay, as a speaker, my role is to do A, B, C, and D, and this is how you do it. Would it be kind of like that? And then just pass it down to the speaker. And then when it's not relevant anymore, whoever is the speaker would take it out and then they would put in whatever else is relevant. Is that how it works? Yeah, it would. I guess the handbook is more supposed to work based off of relevance because the bylaws are supposed to kind of just be constant throughout time. Um, but the handbook is meant to be more I wouldn't say transitional, but more so like abiding to whatever times are happening. Um, and then based off of that as well, I do just want to also clarify that the handbook would work to, um, there would only be specific times of the year that the handbook would allow be allowed to be updated. So like at the very beginning of the semester or at the very end of the semester, like this is, you know, for discussion that's still open, but it wouldn't be something that you can just kind of go into and like add something really quick. It's still going to be something that needs to be um, kind of just reviewed, but not at a pace that's constant, if that makes sense. Thank you. And then somebody else had a question. Oh, yeah. Um, so would Kayla be removed from my committee? No, she will still be a committee chair as long as she's not a deputy chair. Okay, perfect, perfect, thank you. Yeah, and sorry, just to go back to uh, the uh, the handbooks, the reason why we're making those, or why we're striving to make those is because for the strike policy, Matthew and I made it very specific, um, but it can't be specific because things change year to year. 
And even in the bylaws, you can't really put like every single thing. Like, for example, it does say a few basic things that each person needs to do. However, it doesn't say, you know, anything additional that they add upon themselves for that year. Um, so for example, one thing from last year, I think was the calendar that Danny and Dahlia worked on that was not in the bylaws, um, but they still decided to do it. So that is something that could have been included um, in the handbook and then passed down to this year so that it could be continued this year. And then that would be, if there was a strike waiting to happen, the, the handbook would basically be consulted with the things that the person was supposed to do. And then if they did not do the calendar, that could be one of the reasons why a strike would be brought up. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, any other questions about my report? That's not very Okay, so I also got a question about the um, attendance report for committee chairs. So if you guys have it from the beginning of the semester, once we ask for it, probably that'll happen later this week or sometime next week. When we ask for that report, if you have it, that would be great. If you don't have the previous reports, we will just ask that you start you know, taking attendance at your committee meetings keeping record of that. And um, yeah, does that make sense? Okay, any other questions? All right, if there are no questions, then the speaker's report will be filed. Next, we have the report of the chief of staff. Hello everyone, I hope everyone had a great weekend. So I'm gonna start off with a quote. Um, Leadership is not position or title, it is action and example. And um, I'll let you guys ponder on that. But um, so I had a meeting with the majority of the executive board. We discussed committee progress, future plans, and uh, we scheduled our bi-weekly meetings. And I think all the executive boards are members are doing a great job and the committees are doing great work. So keep up the great work. Um, also regarding the handbooks, I think this is something the chief of staff should be working on with each uh, executive board. So um, officer, so um, in our future meetings, so um, when those are, we'll uh, plan to uh, create those handbooks. So yeah, I worked with uh, Daisy on the strike policy. And in addition, we are also doing a leadership development summit um, in replacement of like the orientation, this is something I, I believe will be mandatory for all representatives to attend to. Um, so yeah. So we're also working on, uh, I'm working on increasing student engagement within the student body. Um, this is something I'm gonna work with, uh, with a few people like Kayla on building relationships with uh, the UIC sports teams. Um, I'm gonna work with Tega on making student engagement uh, an emphasis in the experience UIC 110 courses um, they make freshmen take in, the, in uh, their freshman year. Um, I also spoke with Aitana on reworking the USG website to make it more vibrant and engaging. Um, so we're also, I'm also looking into how we can um, spread a USG report. This is something I talked to Wasan about. Um, I, I believe we did used to have access to a UAC listserv, but um, we got revoked of that privilege. So I'm going to see how we can get that back. Uh, more specific with Illinois Perg. So I met with the national director uh, for the campaign and she kind of flamed me for how I'm running it. So I have to readjust everything, basically like repainting a wall. Um, but um, this week we're going to have a work block uh, spreading a different higher ed ed um, issue which is on the Pell Grant. Um, you can learn more on the link, which actually, can you all click on the link, please? Okay. So I think it's been pulled up, but I don't see on the screen. Unless it's not. Okay, cool. So yeah, I just wanna show you guys the graph. So, 
So right now the Pell Grant only covers 28% um, of a student's tuition. So like the, re the remaining is in orange, 72%. So by doubling the Pell Grant, it'll cover 56% of a student's uh, tuition. And as you can see, um, it was a, the historic high was at 79% in uh, 1975 to 76. And um, it's kind of a shame that, you know, the funding has only decreased since then, even though tuition has gone so much higher. So um, I believe this is a great, this is why um, we're working on this issue because it's um, something we're gonna talk to in the lobby day, which is in two weeks, I'm gonna be talking with uh, a few representatives um, and senators about this issue. So it'd be great if you guys can, uh, you know, sign the petition, spread it with your friends. So if we can go back to report, please. So yeah, you can find the, the double Pell petition in my report, which has been emailed to everyone. And um, if you're interested in working in one of our work blocks, uh, please contact me. Um, these work blocks will be just, you know, spreading the petition, uh, not just at UIC, but across the state. And so under actions, you can find um, all the petitions that we're doing, which is the textbook affordability petition, the double Pell petition, and also, um, the document to uh, with, they, um, with all the positions that um, we're running for um, because the deadline has been uh, increased to uh, this one say at midnight. So I yield for questions. Uh, this is not a question, but just, uh, I guess, a point of information. Um, and I just wanted to share this with the whole group. Um, but at one point, like the um, SAAC, which is essentially like the sports team's uh, student gov, if you will, um, and some of their advisors had reached out to me uh, to sort of set up some meetings. Um, ultimately, those meetings fell through just because of scheduling conflicts. I'm happy to kind of like uh, key you in and anybody else who is interested um, in kind of like helping build that relationship up again. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Um, also, I um, tabled this as an item of discussion. So we'll be talking more about, um, you know, giving a gift to um, these sport teams and other clubs um, later on. Are there any other questions? Matthew, do you think you can CC me with your relations, with your initiative in building relations, please? Yes, please. Yeah, I will. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, okay, this is a little random, but um, we kind of forgot to mention both um, myself, Wasan and Matthew forgot to mention, please stay after the meeting for executive board members. If you're an executive board member, please stay after the meeting. We have a few announcements. Um, yeah, and then Matthew, I see you have a question for when will the summit be held? Yeah, so I believe we're planning to uh, hold this next week, um, I believe. Uh, we're planning to have it like in the evening, probably like at, at six or something, but um, um, Daisy, are we going to send a doodle for, for this? Yes, so I will be making a doodle form um, probably either this week or next week, probably this week. Um, and I will be sending it to you sometime later in the week, and it'll basically ask you what times work best for you. We have decided that it'll be after 6 p.m., so it could be 6, 7, 8. Um, we're not too sure yet. We're going to be doing a poll for that, either Doodle Poll or Sign Up Genius. I'm not too sure which one I'm going to do yet, um, but when you get that, please do fill it out um, because the the summit will be mandatory and um, yeah, sometime next week. Any other questions? All right, if there are no questions, 
then the report of the chief of staff will be filed. Next, we have the report of the diversity and inclusion committee chair. Hello, everyone. Um, so, a couple of things I did last week. I met with Dan um, and Representative Malik and President Kumar attended as well. We shared our Title IX plans with them and uh, they're in full support of our plans and uh, they're helping us launch uh, leadership training with uh, CSI and uh, we're going to make it mandatory for all student organizations and uh, we're meeting with CSI to plan this. Um, so after we meet with CSI and like um, discuss all the details, we'll have a resolution to support it. And uh, also meeting with Erin and our advisor, Dr. Ellis, this, this week to um, talk more about the Title IX plans. And I also met with UIC MSA and I heard their updates and progress on what they're working on. So we're happy. We're having an upcoming meeting with crew as well, which is a uh, oh, scratch that off, not hello. I'm sorry, but whatever. Well, maybe we can fix it later. But we're having an upcoming meeting with crew, and they're like a big Christian organization on campus that MSA worked with before. So, and another another religious organizations to have this uh, faith based conversation hour. Uh, led by our committee and uh, really excited for this we're hoping to have it like first two weeks of march maybe like that's the timeline and uh, i also attended the arab american culture center event um, that they had regarding the mina category and uh, they had speakers from california university of california one of the schools i'm not sure which one but one of the schools uh, she came and what like I'm not sure which school, but anyway, she came and she spoke. Um, and they had speakers from Rain Valley too, who are working on the same initiative. So a couple of the universities actually are working on the same thing. Um, oh yeah, so we're also working with the Latino Culture Center to support their initiative in raising awareness on environmental discrimination during COVID. And this is, they're hoping to um, like find professors that will allow them to give this 15 minute uh, presentation about this initiative that they're working on. So we want to work with them to uh, help them, you know, find those professors and those classes. And we had a committee meeting and it went well. We discussed our newsletter plans and our Be Aware campaign plan, plans and we also launched the Be Aware campaign, which is really exciting. And uh, our first uh, organization will be, we have like three organizations lined up and then we're looking for more organizations that obviously to be part of this campaign. Uh, we also discussed other Title IX initiatives and Sarah was attending, um, I, I forgot to include a couple of things on this report, but. Sarah attended the Legislative Affairs Committee meeting to, to also talk about Title IX initiatives, which is something uh, I look forward to see happen in USG where the committees work together um, and like different initiatives if they have the same ideas. Because also during our CAN meeting, Dr. Marginal was like, uh, do you, she asked me like directly if we communicate with each other about our plans, which was kind of, a little bit embarrassing because we like meet every Monday and we discuss our plans, right? So because uh, she told me that like another committee had uh, had scheduled a meeting with her to talk about the same thing, but I told her yes, we do. Um, so our meeting with our event with Ken, this very important event we have coming up, the Shake It Up series event, and I hope you can attend it. I'm going to link the sign up link in the chat and one quick thing i want to mention uh the thing i forgot to include i hope this link works let me let me know if this link doesn't work and another thing 
we had the Know Your Rights event, right? The employment event uh, with GEO and uh, the deans of dean of students office, and we had the attorney come, um, and we had GEO's representative. So, like with the with the thing happening, with the event happening, at the end we had a little conversation, and there now the dean of students office is looking into. Uh, implementing like a person or like implementing a position or an initiative where uh, students can talk about their tax returns and uh, discuss like taxes with with people at UIC so that's something we don't have right now and uh, we're looking to make it happen um oh and I asked so the GEO will be negotiating again this March and I asked if they're gonna go on strike again, which is not gonna be fun. So they, uh, oh my, I just knew my, I just saw your uh, message, okay. Okay, so yeah, so I asked if they're again preparing to go on strike and uh, they told me that they kind of always prepare to, for a strike to happen, so. Like it might happen. We'll see how administration responds to their uh, negotiations. But I don't know. Just wanted to update you on the conversation, and uh, that's it for my report. I yield for I yield for questions. Are there any questions? Yeah, I think I have the same question that Mohammed has. Uh, which, which organization is going on strike? Or is thinking about going on strike? I think I missed it. I'm sorry. Oh no, that's GEO, um, Graduate Employees Organization. So basically, the TAs. Okay, great. Thank you. Any uh, other questions? Um, if they were to go on strike, this would affect classes, right? Yeah, for sure. So I'm not sure if you guys were here when um they went on strike before but uh did affect classes we didn't have uh, you know discussions or anything which was a little bit harmful for like people like me who rely on TAs more than professors but hopefully it doesn't hopefully it doesn't happen any other questions Okay, if no questions, then the report of the Chairwoman of the Diversity and Inclusion Committee Chair, sorry, Chairwoman of the Diversity and Inclusion Committee will be filed. Um, I'm gonna step away from for a moment, Matthew's in charge, and may we please have the report of the Legislative Affairs Committee Chair? Sure, sure. Um, all right. So, hi everybody, hope everybody is doing well. Um, I know midterms are starting up for people, so good luck on those. Um, this week, in regards to our um, sexual assault slash misconduct action items, uh, we met with CAN um, to discuss action items and demands. Um, this was different from a band's meeting and I think Wilson's meeting um, with them because we are focusing more specifically on the letter that um, it produces and uh, why they're, it's sort of insensitive and we're trying to work on restructuring that letter as a whole. Um, so the meeting's purposes were a little different, um, but Sarah actually came to our meeting this week, which was really fun. Um, she talked about the diversity and inclusion committees um, initiative. So, um, that'll be fun to kind of work on some broader goals um, this semester in regards to um, IBHE, which is the Illinois Board of Higher Education. They have their second meeting in regards to financial aid and grants. Um, it's like a essentially all of Illinois, a lot of the colleges kind of are joining together to talk about financial aid and grants and how it can change and action items in regards to how much money they're allocating. So 
Um, the meeting has kind of just been a discussion, discussion time for now. Um, I was the only student there, or I think I was one of two students there. So it was a lot of just kind of discussion pieces and like what things are being defined as. Hopefully there will be more action in the next meeting, but um, I will keep you guys filled in. Um, there was the core group meeting um, this week or last week on Tuesday. That was pretty good. Um, reports as usual. And then there was also the lobbying week is um, officially kind of starting. Uh, everybody's gonna get ready for it. SAC is going to be coordinating with student government um, for us to be going to that. So once I have more information, um, I will make sure to let you guys know. Um, we, um, Taylor and I, Taylor from the president of SAC and I met with the civ civic engagement representative from the Honors College um, she was really interested in seeing if there was any work that we could do together so we could um, create potentially, um, I wouldn't say meetings, but like events. Uh, we kind of just were brainstorming and then there will be a meeting with the president or the director of the Honors College tomorrow at 12, I believe. Um, so again, I will kind of keep you updated as that happens. Um, there was the mental health coalition meetings. Um, I think Wasan and Hannah have talked about those enough for me to kind of not add on. Um, in regards to the meeting that we had on our own, uh, separate from Dean Deanna and Director Ermes, uh, that was, we kind of were looking at data. Hopefully within this week, we've got 500 results. So that'll be, that'll be nice for us to start analyzing data. Um, there was the separate Illinois Board of Higher Education specific to the Student Advocacy Coalition. Um, that meeting was on Friday. Unfortunately, I had a class that coincided with it, so I couldn't make it. But um, when they send out meeting minutes, I'll be looking over those. A lot of it, I'm assuming, is going to be based off of um, discussions that we've kind of had in our separate meetings. So that financial aid and grants meeting. Um, some of the civic engagement meetings that are happening and also I believe a equity group has also formed. So those meetings are probably discussed as well. Um, and then uh, my meeting with Daisy, Matthew and Osan, we talked about the handbooks and the bylaws. Um, Daisy's covered that pretty much. So I'm not gonna really add on to it. And then we had our committee meeting. Um, Michael and I were the people that met with CAN. Um, a lot of the conversation was focused around action items in regards to this letter um, and a little bit more about Title IX functions and how those can be changed. Um, we're going to be focusing, I believe, on, I can give you the three main goals we've got. If I just look at that form. But essentially, we want to focus on um, getting translators, so accessibility, making sure that um, students are able to have conversations in a language that be, they feel comfortable in. Um, for potentially disabled students, um, accessibility in potentially a more physical or mental way, depending on, on what they need. Um, and then having that letter that they send out, it's a very long and extensive letter, so making that more um, trauma-informed in its um, handed out um mode so instead of getting like a big 33 30 something page document you're getting more of a um step-by-step -step guide that the office helps you work through but um title nine meeting is potentially this week so hopefully there will be movement on that that i can report on next week um is that it for me let's see that's about it. So sorry, my report was a little long this week. Um, I yield for questions. Are there any questions? Okay, if there are no questions, then the report of the chairwoman of the Legislative Affairs Committee will be filed. Next, we have the report of the Public Relations Committee Chair. 
Hello, everyone, and good evening. So my committee members and I have met this week, and we've been scrambling and finding items for the promotional items initiative. Um, I've also discussed with my committees about their roles in PRC. So with Abby, I've tasked her with maintaining Instagram. And then with Sarah, I've, been, I've tasked her with maintaining some stuff on the website. And with Malik, I've asked her to reach out to exec board and ask about their initiatives so that we can know and uh, post some announcements or some sort of uh, something on the website to let students know as well. I've met with Matthew on Friday and he expressed that uh, the website needs to be engaging and appealing. So we're gonna work on that. That's gonna be a new initiative that I'm excited for. Um, what we're working on progress right now is every Monday we're, so there's a new initiative that I'm thinking about that, uh, that Daniela talked to me about. So after every Monday meeting, we're gonna create a post and detailing what USG has talked about, what resolutions has passed, what resolutions is on the docket and et cetera. Um, I've talked about uh, the website initiative and then the personal items initiative. We've done step A and B, now we're on step C, which is um, having a resolution. I'm currently drafting one right now. There's some problems because we're trying to get a quote for an item, but it's taking more time than anticipated. And then the rest is uh, mainly ordering the items and then shipping them out. And if you are looking for what we're trying to find for the items, um, there's a link for the inventory that we have. So that's all I have. I yield my time for questions. Are there any questions? All right, if there are no questions, then the report of the Chairwoman of the Public Relations Committee will be filed. Next, we have the report of the Student Affairs Committee Chair. Hello everyone, I hope your fifth week of school was good. So the on-campus internship and research opportunity sheet I was working on is completed, but it's got a star next to it because I've gone by department and organization, but now I want to go by specific major to make sure that we've got a diverse array of internships on the sheet. And um, it's in a Google Sheet format with a view only link for students that will be sent out through the advisors, but the Student Affairs Committee will be able to edit it and add new on-campus internships that they come up or take off the ones who, which have application dates that are passed. And this addresses a concern that rose from the College of Engineering had about having a, like a sheet that was up to date. And I, like I said, I'm going to get in touch with advisors. We already did that. And they're gonna show these on their list so the students can have an opportunity to navigate this. And um, if you'd like to share the link with your friends, I could put in the chat and you can do that. Um, so the letter to the provost regarding the GPA recalculation policy is done and hopefully I should send that out tomorrow morning and we'll see how we can go from there. I met with Matthew and we discussed the textbook affordability campaign that's being spearheaded by him in Illinois Perg and as well as next steps forward because this is very important. And Michelle and I, alongside the Office of Sustainability, may work together to further the Plastic Free UIC campaign, which was initially a part of the Office of Sustainability of Day 2020 project. But I think this will be a group, um, great project to bring up again this year because Earth Month is in April. Um, Matthew and I discussed my ideas regarding mandatory first year seminar courses. And I'm not going to go into too much detail about this because I'm still waiting feedback from academic advisors from the fact sheet I sent to them. But essentially, this is just going to be an extension of the first year seminar courses to cover more majors because these courses, according to UIC's own statistics, specifically from the experienced um, UIC course, students really do benefit from these introductory courses. And some of the courses UIC has right now, are like Engineering 100, UK 120, dial the dialect courses, AHS 100. And this will be especially of help to students who aren't necessarily as assertive and proactive in trying to get connected to on campus resources to support their academic work related to their major and just, their, just generally with their careers. But just a brief understanding, these courses are for freshmen only, not for transfer students. They're generally one credit courses. The grading is usually satisfactory and unsatisfactory. And lengthwise, some of these courses go a full semester, but I'm gonna propose that they shorten it to eight weeks 
or four weeks because I feel like having an introductory course for the entire semester is not really productive. But yes, this is in the early works and I should have more for you next week. Our next committee meeting is this Friday at 4 p.m. Um, I hope you have a lovely week ahead. Now you have questions. Are there any questions? Okay, if no questions, then the report of the chairwoman of the Student Affairs Committee will be filed. Next, we have the report of the Campus Life Committee Chair. Hello, everyone. I hope you had a great week. Um, so what I did last week was um, I met with the Mental Health Coalition um, slash the Student Mental Health Task Force. Um, Hannah basically covered most of it, so I won't like repeat that. Um, and aside from that, I had a meeting with Quinn and Wasson to discuss what happens next with the UIC Honor Code. And I just wanted to keep you all a little updated on that. Um, we're waiting for like approval and revisions for like the deans um, and the academic senate to like kind of read that and um, send us back feedback, et cetera. And then once they do that, which may be in a while, um, a resolution will hopefully come. Um, and in terms of care packages, um, I met with the treasury committee to discuss the funding for the project. Um, I do have the items and stuff pick, like picked out. Um, so what comes next is I've emailed Joshua Butts, who's the um, RHA director about, um, just to confirm the number of students we would want for the care packages. Um, and then once we have that finalized, um, I'll discuss a little more with the treasury committee on ordering that and like hopefully next week a resolution will come. Um, and Taika talked a little bit about this, but um, at our last committee meeting, I had a representative bring up that um, during COVID, the dining halls were having a lot of plastic waste, like um, an alarming amount. Um, so we thought it would be a good idea to work with the Office of Sustainability on kind of amending that and um, just in general imp improving UIC's like um, environmental footprint. Um, so that's an in initiative that I'm really excited to work on with Tega um, and the Office of Sustainability. Um, and that's it for my report. I yield for questions. Any questions? All right, if there are no questions, then the report of the chairwoman of the Campus Life Committee will be filed. The next order of business is old business. So uh, first we have resolution 2021-S3-1100. Wasan, would you like to present this? Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Daisy. Um, so this is resolution 2021-S3-1100, um, supplemental funding for the Open Textbooks Initiative. Um, and it reads, whereas textbooks are one of the largest out-of-pocket costs for college students and can serve as a barrier to success for those who struggle to afford required materials, the price of college textbooks has increased 1,000% over the past 40 years. In a study by the University of North Dakota, over half of survey respondents skipped buying an access code or other course materials, indicating they cannot afford to complete their homework. Open textbooks allow students to use quality materials and enroll in courses for no cost on top of tuition. Then, whereas at UIC, the Open Textbook Faculty Incentive Program provides awards to faculty members who demonstrate a commitment and plan to using open textbooks and other open source educational materials. In AY 2020, this initiative awarded grants to six professors from a pool of $20,000. These professors taught over 750 students and saved students an estimated $154,000 in textbook costs. Applicants can submit proposals at one of three tiers. Tier one, $500 to $1,000 to adopt existing open textbooks. Tier two at $2,000 for modifying open textbooks or educational materials to fit their courses, or tier three at $6,000 to create new openly licensed textbooks. Faculty work closely with the USC library OER throughout the process of adopting open textbooks and education resources. Then let it be resolved that USC offers $10,000 in funding to support the UIC open textbook faculty incentive program. We intend for these funds to provide additional grants to faculty through the current Open Textbook Faculty Incentive Program and leave the funds at the discretion of librarian Dr. Janet Swichano. All right, thank you. Does anybody have any comments or questions regarding this resolution? Uh, 
Um, I I wanted to say something. I I was thinking, wouldn't it be better to uh, have a program of like lend and lease for um, for students to do that at like the bookstore, like you know, having a collection of books that are free to loan um, instead of requiring any uh, payment instead of like having grants for the faculty. Can I answer that? So um, there is currently a system in place that not many people know about with the library. Um, they do have some of the books, not all of them, but they have a good amount of the textbooks that the professors require. And what you can do is you can lend it out, but they only give it to you for a few hours. So you can lend it out and you are welcome to Xerox as many pages as you need. Um, they have Xeroxes at the library. I library, so um, that's something that I guess could answer this question. But um, what's on? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, to answer your question, Representative Vora, uh, essentially this is one way to get the most um, value out of your dollar. Um, essentially, like purchasing textbooks en masse um, is definitely like very expensive, uh, and so are other sorts of um, methods, like you mentioned, like um, like lend and lease sorts of programs. Um, this, while of course, like not every student in a class purchases a textbook, this does ensure that um, the entire course does have access to these materials. Um, one other thing that I did want to mention, and um, I would love to just sort of, uh, I guess, like get any sort of discussion or input on this um, before we vote on this, was that um, the librarian, Dr. Swatcheno, she also mentioned that. Um, so this is an incentive program in the sense that um, we give faculty this. Uh, before they take advantage of open source uh, materials. Um, on the flip side of that, they're also looking to create a new program uh, with USG support, um, where essentially you recognize faculty who have uh, been going, um, you know, kind of above and beyond and using these sorts of open source materials. Um, and that would essentially be a sort of retroactive um, award, which could either be monetary or, or not monetary. Um, and so I would love to hear people's inputs on either helping fund um, this sort of incentive program or helping fund uh, more of a recognition program. We can always sort of uh, leave the funds at the discretion of the library and sort of kind of talk to her through the process. And um, the other option, of course, is to, um, you know, just leave one uh, recognition program without any uh, funding behind it. If, uh, may I speak? Of course. Yeah, so kind of to answer, going back to Zaid's question, um, also, with the way um, textbook companies are going to, with going about, um, they're using like access codes, which are um, are very limited because um, obviously you can't get these access codes at libraries. You have to buy them and you have to renew them every year, and um, they're also just very expensive. And in addition, they also require Wi-Fi. So um, on top of like a like a financial barrier, there's also like a barrier of technology. So which is this is why um. Um, utilizing open education resources is uh, a much better way to go about. And this uh, resolution is a, a great first step in uh, securing uh, like an open textbook uh, world at UIC. Um, so when I spoke with the national director um, a few days uh, last week, she said, uh, I think she said we have to be a little bit more aggressive in terms of you know, telling the departments to uh, use open source textbooks as opposed to like, you know, you know, buying textbooks every year for our students, because of course that would also be expensive for the university. So yeah, that's just uh, my thoughts on that. Are there any comments or questions regarding this resolution? As a reminder, we will be voting on this tonight. All right, so if there are no more comments or questions, we can move on to voting. So I kind of put a message in the chat for the new representatives. I will be asking for everybody to say either I or nay or to abstain and the aye is a vote that yes you support this resolution 
nay is a vote that no, you do not support this resolution. And then abstain just means that you do not feel confident enough to vote. Um, so all those in favor of this resolution, please say aye. 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 All that oppose, please say nay. Does anyone abstain? All right, the ayes have it. And resolution 2021-S3-1100 has passed. The next order of business is new business. And first we have resolution 2021-S2-802. And Anshu, would you like to read this? Uh, yeah, um, so the chief sponsor is me and then the co-sponsors, Deputy Treasurer Mohammed and Representative Matt and um, Megan. <clears throat> so whereas the UIC library is a hub for learning in which many students use the library as a place to study, learn, research, and focus. And whereas the UIC library is putting $4,000 towards the purchase of a 10 bay charging locker, which will be placed in the idea commons for students to charge their devices while simultaneously keeping them secure. And whereas in exchange for USG's financial support, the charging locker will be USG themed, which further creates an impression to the student body of USG's commitment to serving the students on campus. And let it be resolved that the USG will contribute $2,000 towards the $6,000 total cost of the Kiwi Boost 10 bay charging locker, which will be placed in the idea commons of the UIC library. All right, thank you. I would like to open up the floor for discussion. Are there any comments or questions regarding this resolution? Uh, just a point of information, I guess. Do you want me to also follow the link or? Uh, you can, yeah. Okay. So you might have to copy and paste it. Ah. New technologies, man. Oh, and it's the 10 bay one. So I think this is set at six, but you just change it on the, the top. Yeah. That's beautiful. <laughs> All right, so are there any comments or questions regarding this resolution? I have a I have a question about the actual locker itself. Are we able to like sticker it with UIC stuff? Like, does it have like skins, if that makes sense? Yeah, yeah, so we're gonna be able to customize the skins and I'm probably gonna work with the uh, PRC department to like um, figure out like how they want it to be branded and anyone that has any ideas can like pitch in and stuff like that. Sweet, thanks. Can you put the USG logo on it? Yeah, I plan I plan to put the USG logo on it. Awesome. Any other comments or questions? Okay. Um all right. If you guys have anything else that you would like to you know, mentioned about this resolution. We'll be voting on this next week. I do have one amendment that I would like to make, and that is in the name. Um, and I would like to, okay. And then for the new representatives, when I make an amendment, or when I make a motion to make an amendment, um, you have to vote on whether or not you approve the amendment or not approve the amendment, or you can also abstain, okay? So, uh, for this resolution, I would like to make uh, to make an amendment to change the title from resolution 2021-S2-802 to resolution 2021-S4-802 because this is the fourth meeting. Um, all those in favor of this amendment, please say aye. 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 All that opposed, please say nay. Does anyone abstain? All right, so the amendment has passed and this is now resolution 2021-S4-802. 
Are there any other comments about this resolution? I'm a little late, but I have a question on that actual like machine. So is it like a so is it like a machine where he would um you would put your phone in and it would lock or do you take like a charging I'm a, I, I'm so sorry like it's it looks confusing to me. So it's like a lock and a charger inside so you can charge your phone and it locks so it like no one can like steal it. If that makes sense. Oh, okay. So you leave your your phone in there and then it'll lock it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And we would put like instructions on how to do that next to it, or would it have it on the machine? Um, if it doesn't have it on the machine, I think uh, the library could probably make like a little like poster or something that people would put next to it. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Okay, so if not, then we'll be voting on this next week. If you guys have any questions next week or comments, feel free to bring them up next week. Uh, for now, we will move on to the next resolution, which is resolution 2021-S4-901. And this is the resolution that I presented. Um, so let me read it. It is titled USG support for Ivor Chen. Um, and then I am the chief sponsor and then treasurer Anshu is the co-sponsor. Whereas the University of Illinois prides itself in equity and fairness. And whereas university teaching assistant Yudong Ivor Chen was dismissed for a year from University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign for COVID-19 testing non-compliance, although he sheltered in place and taught entirely virtually. And whereas Ivor is an international student and his visa status is being revoked, forcing him and his mother to leave the country during a global pandemic. And whereas Ivor has attempted to appeal the decision and has the support of his department, college dean, and the GEO, but his appeal has been denied. And whereas Ivor's dismissal from the university is immoral, unethical, and wrong, then let it be resolved that the undergraduate student government stands in support with Ivor and urges the university to reconsider Ivor's dismissal. So a little background information on this is that um, this teaching assistant at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, he was basically staying at home the entire semester and teaching virtually. He did not go to do his required COVID testing because he was home the entire time and he believed that it is not, you know, that it's not needed for him to do the testing because it would only put himself and other students at risk for him to show up there. Um, and the McKinley portal, which is a UIC health, or sorry, U of I health portal, they uh, essentially for the spring semester said that they agree that he should be exempt from that testing. However, for the fall semester, the university considers Ivor to be, you know, wrong for non-compliance with the uh, COVID-19 testing policy, and they have dismissed him, therefore causing all of these issues, you know, for sending him back to, to his home country, taking away his visa. They have dismissed him for one year. Um, and basically during that one year, he has some sort of punishment that he has to, to do, which I'm not, I'm not too sure what it is. Um, but I, like, to me personally, this seems like very wrong, very immoral of the university to do this, especially because the McKinley Health Portal agreed that he should be exempt from it. So uh, yeah, I, I, I guess that's all the comments I have for this, um, but I would like to open up the floor for discussion and hear your thoughts on this. Any questions, comments, clarifications? Uh, yes. I have a question, I guess. Um, 
what does student support of you at U of I look like right now? Like, are a lot of people rallying behind this or? So like, there how is a about it? Yes, so I know, all I know about is that there is a petition that they have. I'm not even sure how many signatures it's gotten, but I will check it out right now and get back to you in a, in a minute or so. Yeah, just to interject, if you don't mind, there was like a protest this morning even um, in support of like Justice Shriver. Uh, you can scroll through the meme pages. Um, there are lots of posts there as well. Uh, I just want to say as an international student that to getting a, how say a visa to study in America is very hard. And with his situation that like you are deport him like that, he's not gonna have a chance to come back to uh, United States anymore. So like we need to help him like resolve it. Otherwise he's not gonna be able to come back to United States or anything anymore. Okay, so I was able to check that out, Kayla. Um, it's some 13,500-ish uh, people that have signed the petition to support Ivor. Um, so it seems that he's getting a good amount of support. And also it's important to note that he got the support from his college dean. He got the support from his um, department that he's working for. And he also got the support from the GEO, which is a graduate uh, employee organization, right? Yep. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, so he's got a lot of support. And for some reason, the university has decided to not consider his appeal. And they have just kind of decided that the decision is quote unquote final, although I do believe student support can reverse it. Um, yeah. Any other comments or questions? I do have a question. Um, I was wondering, where is he right now? Like, is how long ago was this decision? And like, where is he right now? Has his visa been revoked already? Or is this like, uh, your visa will be revoked? Uh, like, how is the timeline right now? I'm not too sure. Does anybody else know? So, as I know, as an international student, if your like I twenty or visa got like canceled, dismissed, you have sixty days to pack your stuff and go back to your main country. Which is, I think that it's happened last week where his like case got like got final. I think so. He got another fifty days or so. I guess. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? So yeah, who was in charge of like um like dismissing him? Was like the University of Illinois um like board or like who who uh, finalized the decision? I'm also not sure. Uh, I think it's the uh, associate vice chancellor for student affairs. Uh, I believe her name is uh, Dr. Anita Young, but I can check that for you. Yeah, I'm not, honestly, I'm not too certain with all of the specifics of the case. All I know is that they did this and that it's, in my opinion, wrong, entirely wrong to do this to somebody who's given everything for this university um, and, you know, left their country for this university to be able to be here, study here, teach here, and then they get this treatment for, you know, what seems to be no good reason because he was sheltered in place. So. I just don't really understand because like, so he like didn't take a test and he sheltered, so he wasn't with anyone. But like, there's like people know that University of Illinois, um, UIUC um, has had like parties and like in their dorm houses and like no one seems to get in trouble for that or like kicked off campus for that, but he's getting kicked off because he didn't take a test and like, even though he was sheltered in place and quarantined. Yep. Um, were we able to contact him by any chance before like writing this or is there, like, do you know how to contact him in any way? I do not. All I know is that it is possible 
for Wasan as the president to possibly collaborate with the other two student governments and maybe come up with some, I don't know, statement, joint statement or something else? I yeah, I might send this. I'm so sorry. I was just going to say, um, yeah, I would definitely encourage us to to do something about this. As Mai said, like this is like a time sensitive problem and I didn't really know about it. So definitely like if we can send like emails, if we're able to help with like sharing the the petition in our in our Instagram, like whatever we can do, we should definitely do it because as again, as an international student, um your visa is everything and like all the effort that their family had to do and like all of his work, everything is just so hard. So if we can definitely support him, that would be amazing. And I thank you, Daisy, so much for putting this uh, resolution together. Thank you. I think the best uh, thing that we can do is just get in contact with the uh, U of I, both probably graduate and undergraduate uh, student governments. I think that'll be probably the most important step because like it's great for us to do this, um, but it's more important to get it to the people who actually make the decisions. Right, you know, um, something I'm doing is contacting student governments from Springfield and Urbana, um, because actually this was uh, something I was working on, like getting the three presidents in like a presidential summit sort of uh, event. And um, I'll mention that in uh, my email if they reply. Thank you, Matthew. Okay, any other comments or questions? So we would normally vote on this next week. However, Wasan asked to make this an executive order. So Wasan, would you like to? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I would like to use an executive order to move resolution 2021-S4-901 uh, to be voted upon tonight. All right, so the president has called for an executive order. So we will be voting on this tonight. So all those in favor of resolution 2021-S4-901, please say aye. 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 All that oppose, please say nay. Does anybody abstain? Okay, the ayes have it. This resolution has passed. Um, thank you all. I'm sure Ivor is thankful of our support as well. Um, if we could get the PRC committee to push this resolution out al along with the petition that's going around, that would be awesome. Um, and we can move on to the next order of business which is items for discussion. First, we have USG gift to sport teams. And then Matthew, would you like to talk more about this? Yes, yeah, so um, so this idea kind of came up when, we're, when I was talking to uh, Kayla about student engagement and like how we can get other um, students from let's just say other organizations to be involved with um, you know, student advocacy. And um, the first uh, place we kind of looked at is, you know, um, sports teams and athletes and getting them to um, also be examples of uh, student engagement. And I think a great way to uh, start this is by, you know, giving them a, a gift. And um, so I guess my question is to uh, start this uh, discussion is one, like what should this gift be um, if we do um, decide on a gift? And two, how can we communicate this as, a potential relationship between uh, the USG and um, these uh, sport teams. Yeah, and really quickly, just to add on, um, my, because I used to be on the dance team before I was on student government, and um, something that we really wanted, like not just the dancers, but like I know the basketball players, like the best games were when there was like, you know, a ton of students or a ton of people in the, um, in the arena, um, it, you know, otherwise you, we're not really cheering, we're not really getting anyone's spirit. <laughs> There's like no one in the stands. Um, and the only time that happens is, is if it's like a, a hometown game, like Loyola and UIC or something. Um, 
And that completely changes the energy of not only the game, but like the um, campus of that day. Um, you know, people will be decked out in like more UIC gear and there's just overall like more of a community feel. So I think getting that across to, and of course there are tons of athletes that don't like that aspect, but hopefully there are more that do than don't. Um, but maybe just like getting across, um, like getting the point across to the athletes that like, if we build uh, student engagement, it means that they, like students will come to your games more. You'll have more people supporting you um, in your games and overall in the season and stuff. And I think that kind of goes both ways. Either we start with getting, getting students at the games more or we start by building the student body community more. Either way, uh, it's gonna benefit them. So. Uh, I think that's how they can get excited about it. But yeah, like Matthew said, it's like, how does, how do we initiate that? And what are some gifts that we can give to help boost that? If we just kind of want to introduce ourselves to the, uh, to the, the athletic uh, departments, uh, I, I would say a good gift to introduce ourselves is always food. Um, I know that like proper fuel is really, really important for, for, for really good uh, athletic performance. And so we, I, I think that's a great uh, introductory gift. And then obviously we can work from there on, on getting them more people in the, into the actual events. I, I like the idea on, I was thinking of something more permanent. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So, like maybe on like, sorry, go, sorry, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. No, you can go ahead. Okay, so I know in previous years, USG has been, has worked in collaboration with Adidas for some of our merch. I know two years ago, we had merch with Adidas logo on it because we collaborated with them. Um, so maybe if, I don't know, if we could collaborate with them, provide them with merch or some sort of, you know, um, I don't know, what, what is it called? Would it be like a uniform? It's not a uniform. It's their their gear Jersey. that they jerseys. Yep. Thank you. So their their jerseys that they perform in, that they uh you know, um have their games in. If we could maybe provide them with that, um because I know sometimes for for sports teams they don't really get new stuff often. So that might be something that we could do. I think that's a great idea. Um, the only thing is we might have to talk to like the guy that organizes it because he also works with the, um, he's the one that like coordinates the bulls lights and everything. And he's super specific about like branding and imaging. So we might have to work like through him instead of uh, like the actual coaches of, of the teams just to make sure like the branding is still the way that they want it and stuff. Um, but I think that's a great idea, even if it's just like something that they wear before the games too, if we can't get like the actual jerseys or something that they wear around campus, um, even if, you know, we have to start small, if, you know, we can't get our full, like a jersey or something in there, maybe if we start with something by like putting it on their backpacks, because um, they have a lot of the same backpacks and stuff. Um, yeah, but I think that's a great idea. That's awesome. Uh, just so everyone's aware, UIC Athletics is currently uh, sponsored by Adidas, so they get all their stuff from there. So. so are we thinking maybe gifting not just sports teams then, but like also like other clubs, like maybe like USG logo, um, like have the, the shirts with the USG logo and also their, uh, their club logo? Would that be a good idea? I think it might be. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, no, go ahead. I think it might be a little hard to just decide which clubs you might want to um, give things to. And of course, like we do have a lot of student organizations, and uh, we wouldn't want anyone to feel left out of uh, any sort of gift giving process. Right. Um, I was thinking about what Kayla said about audiences at um, functions and events and such. Um, and I was thinking maybe we could um, like work with the, uh, I'm sorry, I'm forgetting. Uh, 
the UIC radio, that's what it's called. Um, cause you know, they're always on, but like literally no one listens. Um, and so I was thinking we could kind of work that in as a kind of, you know, friendly propaganda kind of thing. Um, we could set up like speakers in inner and uh, maybe like the square, but you know, it's not like playing all day. Um, <laughs> It, um, it would just play at like, you know, once every three hours and make like announcements during the um, 10 minutes of transition between classes um, and kind of just like inform everyone about like the daily like, uh, like events and stuff. Um, because I know that most students do not like engage as much and so they might not know that like there is a game or a function but you know, once they find out, they might be like, you know what? I'll I'll gather a friend or two, and maybe I'll go. So kind of this this kind of like awareness of events is something we should try to do. I'm gonna hop in. Yeah. Real quick. Um, oh, great, great. Yeah, I I love what you mentioned, especially about um, kind of like increasing the reach of which USC Radio could be essentially ever present. Uh, with relation to student gov, like we had actually uh, been working with them to sort of create a series to talk about some of the work that we've been doing, especially last semester when we were talking about like grading policy and other sorts of really important things that uh, affect every student. Um, and so we had planned for some stuff, but it kind of fell through at the last moment. Um, so I love that. I think we could definitely look to uh, reignite some of these uh, connections. But yeah, sorry, Quinn, I'll fit for a bit. No, please. Um, so something that I, I think that Zaid brought up a, I'm sorry, am I saying that correctly? I feel, I always feel terrible pronouncing people's names incorrectly. You're good. Okay, cool. Um, I think you brought up a great point by saying that like, uh, there's a lot of people that don't necessarily know about a lot of this stuff just because UIC is predominantly a commuter school. So a lot of people just go to their classes and leave. Um, and so I think it'd be really important to get uh, teacher involvement. And, and cause I think if we get the teachers excited about sports, we can get the students excited about it as well because they'll actually bring it up in classes and then that'll uh, in, incite people to go and, and it, it'll, it'll all be really good, I think. The question of course would be, how do we get teachers excited about sports? <laughs> I think firstly, our uh, sport teams need to win. Um, I'm not sure, I don't follow uh, Legic sports, so. I think we have a pretty good basketball team here. And I know we have a good swim team, but we also have like the only swim team in Illinois. So it's pretty hard to be bad when you're the only one. <laughs> we also have really good volleyball and soccer, so. Does anybody know why we don't have a football team? No. <laughs> I think it's just too expensive and space would be an issue and also we'd be competing with our Banner Champagne those are all the reasons that I can come up with off the top of my head but yeah money is a great reason Keith <laughs> I just wanted to say that another thing that we could do to raise the spirit at UAC is um, also contacting UAC orientation. I think that that's so essential because like as soon as you enter campus, um, you go through like this spirit day or something. But the point is that freshmen really get excited to be part of UIC. So if we are able to like have a really strong welcoming and orientation, then all of the freshmen are gonna be excited. Um, so I think it definitely, it would be more in the future. I feel like the people that are already in UIC already think that UIC um, already have like the idea in their mind that maybe sports is not as cool and they, they shouldn't be attending all of the sport events and all of this. But if we tackle UIC orientation and think in the future and make them really um, encourage UAC spirit and like UAC athletics spirit, uh, then that might be a better approach to actually like in the future have um, like a really strong community, uh, UAC community. And another thing, um, I was just going to agree with Wasan that giving a gift to the sports team might be complicated if it's not something that we give to everyone, especially because with gear, I think that um, probably 
the group in campus that has more UIC gear is athletics because they have, well, yeah, they just are giving a lot of like UIC gear. So I definitely think that instead of gear, we could give them like a letter or something that's like not gear, um, maybe a basket. I don't know how it would work with like online um, everything, um, but maybe not UIC gear because that um, it would be difficult to like exclude other organizations or departments. Are there any other comments? Okay, thank you um, everybody for commenting. Yes, Matthew? So um, just to summarize our discussion, what is our consensus here? Do you think this is a, a good idea? We need to look up the NCAA guidelines on gifting to athletes. <laughs> I, yeah, what Kayla just said is like really important because I'm also tutoring for like the Port Academic Center and like the rules are really, really, really strict. Any other comments? Any other items for discussion? All right, if there are no items for discussion, then we can move on to the next order of business announcements. Does anybody have any announcements? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to mention that there are uh, a lot of exciting events this week uh, as part of Black History Month. Um, and this sort of culminates at the end of the week on Saturday with a town hall on um, social justice and activism at UIC specifically. So if anybody has um, you know, like interest and availability, like I encourage you all to attend. Thank you. Any questions, comments, or other announcements? I do have one announcement. So again, just um, if you would like to volunteer uh, one of our work blocks for Illinois for spreading this uh, double pal petition, um, please email me and um, I can send you the days that we are doing these work blocks. Thank you. Any questions? Any other announcements? I have an announcement. Um, eboard, please make sure to stay after this meeting. Is there anything, any other announcements that we have? Okay, if not, we can move on to the next order of business, which is adjournment. Is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? I motion to adjourn. Okay, there has been the motion. Is there a second? A second. Okay, it has been moved and seconded. All those in favor of adjourning this meeting, please say aye. 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 All that opposed, please say nay. Does anyone abstain? Okay, the ayes have it. This meeting is now adjourned at 8.29 p.m.